Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. Today is a very busy day here and I wanted to show you how I prepare food on days when we are going to be out of town or not out of town, but in town for most of the day. I shared my pantry tour last week and in that pantry tour, I showed all of the food that we have preserved together over this past summer. Now it is time to start consuming all of that food. Generally, we try not to dig into our pantry stores until the end of October or so, because up until that point, we can eat a lot of food fresh. But we are definitely heading into the short days of winter now where we don't have anything fresh coming out of the garden. So now it is time to start digging into that pantry. So we're going to start with that, going down and shopping for some groceries out of our pantry to make all of the meals that we're going to make today. I already got some potatoes and carrots. These came out of the root cellar a couple of days ago and they've already been scrubbed and washed. So I'm going to be using these to make the lunch that we're gonna to have today. We're going to make a turkey soup. The lighting is just terrible down here, but needless to say, this is our pantry. So that's our store-bought pantry. That's what we call it down on the end. And that is mostly store-bought items. And then in here we have our canning pantry. And this is where we have all of our canning that we've done together over the summer, all stored along with some dry goods and herbs and things like that over here. I was planning on making a oatmeal cherry peach crumble, but I can already see that we are digging through our peaches here and we've used a couple of jars of cherries as well but we haven't touched our blueberries yet so i think we will take some canned blueberries here and we will make a blueberry crisp oatmeal type thing for breakfast this morning we are also going to need some turkey broth and i actually have most of my canned meats down under here just because I ran out of space on my shelves this year and <laughs> our turkey broth is way down under here so we'll grab a couple of jars of canned turkey as well and I'm going to make a simple turkey soup for lunch today with a really simple homemade pasta that we call galushkas so we'll grab three of these we also need some tarragon. We'll use up the rest of this parsley in here. And I have some sage upstairs, so we won't bother grabbing some sage. I think that's it for this cupboard. Now, if I didn't already have the potatoes and the carrots upstairs that I had taken out of the pantry and were already scrubbed up, I actually would just grab some canned potatoes and some frozen carrots from the freezer and throw them in there just because of the extra work of going down to the root cellar, grabbing the vegetables and having to get them all scrubbed and everything um, because I'm looking to save time this morning. But since I do, that's what we'll use. And we'll grab an onion. These onions here, so these were the sweet uh, Spanish onions. They don't hold up in storage very well. So as you can see, I'm already getting some sprouting here. So I'm gonna grab those two ones that are sprouting out of here. We'll add those into our soup as well. I already have all of my flour filled up upstairs and I also have a big bag of oats upstairs as well so I don't need to bring those up. So we're going to grab a bowl and some flour and you can see that I did, whoops, <laughs> that I did put the cupboards back on but we still don't have the hardware, I don't know if I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but we ordered some copper hardware from Etsy and it said it was shipping from Canada, but when we actually looked at the statement that we received, they were coming all the way from Turkey. <laughs> so they are gonna be a little bit of time before they actually get here, but I just needed to have the gaping holes <laughs> that were there covered up with the cupboards. Okay, so we have our oatmeal here. We buy our uh, oatmeal in these big bags, bulk from, is that gonna stay? Nope. <laughs> bulk from uh, Save On Foods, actually. And they actually carry organic ones, which is awesome. We don't always buy organic, but when it is available, we try to. So I'm going to do probably six cuts here of oats and just around a cup and a half 
of whole wheat. I'm not whole wheat, all purpose flour, although you could use whole wheat for sure. We need some butter, we need some salt. So we're gonna add around a half a teaspoon or so of salt to this. And I'm also going to add a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of cinnamon. And this is just going to be a really simple um, crisp, but I'm not going to be adding sugar to this. I'm going to add some maple syrup instead so it's nutritious and we'll make a really nice breakfast. So we're just gonna mix this all together. And then I'm going to add just about a cup of butter to this. If you are going to use uh, old fashioned rolled oats rather than quick oats, for a recipe like this, I like to add liquid to my oats just because they do take a little bit longer to cook and the added liquid does help speed things along a little bit. And in this case, I'm going to add, I think a little bit of milk to this once I get the butter all mixed in. So with all of the butter that's in here, I'm not even going to bother buttering our tray here. So these are just blueberries in light syrup. So I'm actually going to throw all of the syrup right in here as well. Canned blueberries are just the freshest smelling I find of all fruit. So rather than adding more liquid from these ones into this, cause that would be too much liquid, I'm actually gonna drain out this into a cup over here because I'm sure somebody would like that. So these are slightly sweetened. This is a really light syrup that I used with these. So I'm not gonna add any ad added sweetening to this. I am, however, going to add some maple syrup to this. Just to give it a little bit of sweetening. So I'm probably gonna add around half a cup. I made this for my kids the other day, except I used cherries and peaches and they absolutely loved it. So I'm sure they'll enjoy this. Give this a good mix up. And now all I'm going to do is pour this right on top of our blueberries here. I didn't bother adding any extra liquid to the top. I did have to when I did it with the cherries and the peaches because there just wasn't as much juice, but this is pretty juicy and I think there's enough liquid in there to soften up all of these oats and help them to cook. So we're gonna put them into a 350 degree oven for around 30 minutes and then we'll check on them. We're just gonna cook them until they're nice and golden brown on the top. Like I said, it is going to be a very busy day today. So I want to get all of the meals that I need for the entire day done, whoops, <laughs> oh shoot, <laughs> done this morning. So I'm keeping it pretty easy on myself. We are going to have a really simple turkey soup for lunch. And I'll show you how we're going to make some really easy just drop noodles to put in to our soup. Oh my goodness, that broth smells incredibly good. And I think I'll add one of water and then if I have to add a little bit of bouillon to flavor it up, I'll do that. I usually don't bother putting any salt into my soup until I've added all of my veggies, my stock, my seasonings like um, the uh, tarragon that we're gonna use, a little bit of basil, some thyme, because most of the time, I don't even need to add salt because I did already add some salt to my um, stock. So I'm also, when I'm using canned meats for soups, I wait until the end to add them because these are already cooked. I do find that they tend to fall apart more readily than fresh meat does in a soup, so we'll wait and add that till just before 
we are going to eat. And I will also be adding the liquid that's inside of here as well. We're going to add a little bit of tarragon to this. And parsley. And then we're gonna chop up some onions, add that, all our other veg, and then we'll just let that cook up while we're going to make pizza crust. So I'm gonna do pizza for dinner tonight. Pizza, if the crusts are made, is actually pretty easy. So I'll be making the crust and then I'll be putting that dough in the fridge and then we'll just pull it out an hour before we actually want to make our pizzas. And I already have pizza sauce. I actually forgot to grab the pizza sauce from down in the pantry, but I can do that a little bit later. And then just adding some toppings, some ham and some, um, what else am I gonna do? I'll probably do a ham and pineapple, probably do a pepperoni and then a couple of just plain cheese pizzas. So this onion has definitely seen better days. It's starting to rot. So I'm just going to take the top so they don't get wasted and chop those up and add those to our soup and then I'll just be throwing the onion itself into the compost. We got another solar system. So we have that Blue Eddy solar system that I shared with you for our little cabin, our little 1960s cabin that we're finishing up and restoring. Um, so we have the solar system in there and we're gonna give you a review on that. And then we also got a slightly smaller system for the Bunky, which is fantastic and our goal long term is actually to hook these solar systems that we have for the cabins up to our larger solar array when we get our house system all set up our goal is to eventually have the farm running off of solar we always want to keep the electric backup so we're on hydro here in bc and we want to keep uh, tied into the grid i have lived off grid before so where i didn't we weren't connected to the grid and had solar and generator and i can say that there were elements of it i really enjoyed the number one thing i enjoyed was just how quiet it is solar power just has a completely different kind of I don't know, almost like background buzz than um, having electricity running through your house all the time and just the sound of electrical or electric appliances and things like that. So I love that, but I do not love not being able to run my washer and dryer whenever I need it, not being able to have hot water whenever I need it, certain types of conveniences that having a family and raising children, I just really, really appreciate. So we'll always be tied into the grid, but we wanna have the, the solar, as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper to that, a little bit of basil, and we'll just let that get boiling while we chop up all of our carrots and our potatoes. I am happy to say that the rodent issue that we have been dealing with all fall for some reason this year was just crazy with the amount of mice and pack rats that we were having that has abated <laughs> thank goodness we haven't had any mice in the house in the pantry um, and even in the root cellar actually for the last couple of weeks which is really great because mice are disgusting absolutely they may be cute little critters but they poop all over everything and that is really gross and nibble on things. So happy for that. The way I calculate the amount of veggies that I need to add to any kind of homemade soup that I'm making is I account for one carrot per person, if they're large carrots like this, um, one carrot per person and then one large potato per person. And that's just if I'm making a batch of soup that I'm not anticipating having leftovers for. So just kind of a one and done meal. And that seems to work out pretty well. Of course, it depends on the age of the people that you're feeding and how much they generally eat. And whenever I am making any kind of soup, I tend to go really heavy on all the veg and not as heavy on the meat because of course 
the vegetables are much less expensive than the meat is. So for this soup, like I said, I'm just gonna be using the two cans. And is this the breasts? Just occurred to me. Oh, this is a mix, that's good. I tend to, for soups, prefer to use the darker meat and reserve using the breasts for other meals. I'm not sure what we're gonna do. We have two pigs right now that we'll be processing in the next couple of weeks. What we've actually decided to do for Christmas gifts this year is to um, process some meat for family members because food is so incredibly expensive right now and for young families and young people that are just starting out, it's really difficult to eat healthy food. So we're gonna be processing um, those pigs for that purpose. But once those pigs are in the freezer, we are not going to have the means to dispose of a lot of these types of um, veggie off cuttings and things like that from our kitchen. And we're not really anticipating getting pigs again. Who knows, I might change my mind. <laughs> but I've been talking about getting out of pigs for years now and yet still somehow I have pigs. <laughs> but my goal is to get out of them. They're just so expensive to raise with grain prices at this point um, in time. And because we can grow our beef, we raise our own hay so we can grow beef for very inexpensively. It makes more sense for us to do that in our situation. So anyways, now I have decided that I am going to start getting into some different forms of composting. I usually make a ton of uh, manure compost that I use in my garden to amend my soils each year. And I still plan on doing that, but I'm going to dig a big hole in my big manure compost pile and start composting our yard waste as well or not yard waste, rather, our um, kitchen waste. There is still, there are quite a few things that we can give to chickens, like these peels, but they do need to be chopped up more finely. So they require a little bit more kind of processing than giving things to pigs does. So we will be doing that as well, making sure that we give um, a lot of things to the chickens. I am so grateful that we do not have snow right now. Snow just makes everything more difficult. And I know a lot of people love snow and think it's really beautiful. And I used to too when I was younger, <laughs> but I do not the same way anymore. I find it, it's just, yeah, it just makes everything more difficult. It makes a lot more work on a farm in the winter time, just with all the shoveling and plowing and all of that. So having the snow hold off this year has been really fantastic and like I said it's allowed us to be able to get so much more done outside than we uh, normally get to do this time of year. I got so busy chatting with you guys I didn't realize what a huge pile of carrots we are getting here. Oh that soup it smells so good. I'm definitely a soup in the winter person because these potatoes are already well scrubbed, I'm not going to bother uh, peeling them. Uh, I think I can add a few more potatoes into there, but it is looking good. It smells amazing. Perfect. So now I'm just gonna tidy up all of this mess here. Onions and um, livestock for the most part, they don't really love it. They don't mind eating onions if they're cooked, but I find that my pigs and my chickens, maybe they're just a little bit snobby, but they won't eat onions. So that's gonna go into the compost. This and this, that and that over there. And then this will go out to the pigs. Now we're gonna move our way over to this side of the kitchen and make some pizza dough. 
You know what I'm really excited about? So we have our big pantry downstairs, which I love. And then in these cupboards down here, I keep smaller containers of, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the bulk food that we have down in the pantry, also on the top of my fridge up there. But I go up and down to the pantry downstairs multiple times a day. So Dan and I were talking about converting, I'll show you. This closet here, which is in the process of the beginning stages of this uh, renovation project that we're going to do, but into a pantry, so a smaller pantry. And that way I can move the food out of the kitchen, have more cupboard space for all of my large pots and things that I currently have down in the closet in my office um, into the kitchen. And then the, all the pantry type foods will go in this closet. So it's basically going to be a miniature of our bigger pantry downstairs. That can go down and this will go over by our delicious smelling soup. Okay, so for this recipe, I am just gonna kind of wing it, but I am using the base recipe from, what is this website? Mumsdish.com and this is the overnight pizza recipe. But I am going to make six pizza crusts out of this. So we have four cups of water in here, half a cup of olive oil, two teaspoons of yeast, and I buy my yeast in bulk and I keep it in the freezer and then I just take out about this much, keep it in a mason jar in my fridge. And that keeps it active for a long time. So we're going to do this just like we would with any other type of bread and we are going to knead it until it is no longer sticky. It's pulling away from the sides. Usually in a mixer, it's around four minutes or so. If you're going to hand knead it, it'll be around eight minutes. And Dan is home, so once we have this into the fridge, we can head outside and I can give you an update on all of the projects that we have going on out there. All right, we have our dough is now done. And all I have to do with this is put it into a bowl, an oiled bowl, cover it up, put it in the fridge, and then take it out an hour before we are going to actually need to make our pizzas just so it can come up to room temperature again. And what's pretty awesome is breakfast is now ready in the oven. I'm gonna pull it out in just a second. We have our pizza dough done for dinner and we have our turkey soup pretty much done. The little pasta noodles I'm going to make take no time at all. So all together we did breakfast, lunch, and supper in around 45 minutes or so. So definitely cooking from scratch can be a little bit more labor intensive than convenience type foods. But as you can see, this is kind of convenient, right? I did all of the work in the summertime with the preserving or with the growing of all that food. And then obviously the preserving of canning it all and all of that is quite, quite time consuming. But over the winter, it's actually not that bad at all. and gives me an opportunity to slow down a little bit, kind of shift gears and focus on other things while still being able to feed my family uh, awesome food, nice home cooked food. And I use these waxed cloth covers and I cannot tell you how fantastic these are. I have been using these same ones for over a year now. They were actually sent to me by one of you. Hi Lynn, if you're watching. And uh, they are absolutely fantastic and I don't need to use plastic wrap. I could have actually added some more liquid to this because it's still pretty dry. I probably should have just kept all of the juices that I took out from the blueberries in this, but I'm sure it's still gonna taste delicious. A little bit more like a blueberry granola situation. Do you know what's crazy? So it is heading towards the end of November right now and we still have wasps 
flying around outside. I have never seen that in all my years here. Okay, I am going to tidy up the kitchen and then we will head outside and I'll show you what we have going on out there and then we'll come back in and make the noodles for the soup. It is just gorgeous out here this morning. Oh, I am so grateful for this beautiful extended autumn that we are having. Ooh, it is a little slippery though. We've been getting a little bit of rain in the evenings and it makes everything super sparkly, but also a little bit slippery. Oh my goodness, look at how beautiful it is. Oh, it's gonna be hard to go back inside after this. Oh, well maybe we'll just quickly start over at this cabin over here. And I'll give you a bit of an update on the cabin. Uh, one of the challenges with sharing projects on YouTube is that sometimes those projects take a lot longer than we originally anticipate them to take. This is one of them. So one of the things that I find that makes it more challenging to finish projects, renovations type projects, especially on a homestead is that there's always something pressing that needs to be taken care of on a homestead. Trees fall on fences all the time. Cows escape, pigs escape, bit buildings need to be um, winterized. The seasons are always changing and there's always something new to, to do that is pressing, that needs, that takes precedence over anything else that you might have had planned. What I find is that projects like this, any type of renovation project that doesn't have to be done for some really important reason, falls to the bottom of that list nine times out of 10. And that's okay, that's just part of the lifestyle and I'm okay with it, but it does make it challenging to share projects on um, YouTube <laughs> because they take so much longer. Um, and one of the things that's sort of about me personally is I tend to grossly underestimate the amount of time a project's going to take. So one of the things that Dan and I have been talking about I'm going to really try not to do is to say, oh, we'll get this finished in two weeks <laughs> or anything, set any type of time frame around a project here on YouTube. So at this point, I have absolutely no idea when this is going to get done. I know that we're plugging away on it a little bit at a time. So just to give you a quick update, we have decided to put plywood. I don't know if I mentioned this in one of our previous videos, but plywood on underneath the drywall. And the reason for that is this building was built in the 1960s and wasn't built to modern day standards, wasn't the sturdiest building in the world. So by adding the extra plywood, we have just sturdied it up, made it so that it's not going to crack or <laughs> move in the wind or anything like that. And we also have the added benefit of being able to potentially move this building in the future, which we have talked about because it will be built so solidly. And I always get asked when I show these cabins, uh, what about a bathroom? <laughs> because there's obviously no room for a bathroom. So our solution to that is that each one of our cabins is going to have its own outhouse. And we are also going to have a bathhouse right parked up there beside my van. I am so excited about this bunkie. Let me show you inside for those who haven't seen it yet. They're such cute little buildings. Our plan to heat this is to have a little mini wood stove in it and then some backup electric heat. And because of the smaller square footage, we think we're gonna be able to keep it heated with that insulated floor and insulated ceiling. So this is the main floor of it. And then upstairs, it has a beautiful loft. The reason that we chose this one, this one is called the Haven Ultra is because of the size of this loft. You can actually stand up in it at the center and then it has this extra space right here for being able to put a dresser or something like that. They do have another version that's the Haven and that is a loft, it comes out to about here and then you can see down into the basement area but we wanted the larger square footage of having the bedroom up here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think you mentioned, right? So they're not insulated mm -hmm. in the kit. They don't come with insulation, but we are adding, I think you showed them before we built an insulated floor. Yep. So the floor there is insulated. It was R24 insulation in the floor. And then up top, 
I've just framed on top of it and we're putting uh, just R14 insulation in there and um, sheeting over that and then shingling it. And then for ventilation, we're just gonna put some metal grating. Whoa, I <laughs> just about dropped the camera. There we go. We're just gonna add some metal grating for soffit there to keep the pests out. And um, hopefully that's good. We'll seal it up. For ventilation, we're just gonna put some metal grating. Whoa, I <laughs> just about dropped the camera. There we go. We're just gonna add some metal grating for soffit there to keep the pests out. And um, hopefully that's good. We'll seal it up. Dan was just telling me that Bunky is having a huge sale right now. So he's just gonna pull out his phone so that we can show you. Well, this is right off their website. This is showing their Black Friday sale. There's a countdown timer until it ends because it's such a good deal. Um, we do have a link down below in the show notes, is that where you yeah, put it? Yeah, that's where I'll put it, yeah. Okay. Some of the deals I'll point out is like right here, where if you have, if you're going to purchase a, a Haven or a Haven Ultra or a Rockwood, these are some of their bigger bunkies and the, the sort of more beautiful ones. Um, you can buy the little bathroom building for only $500. That's incredible. That is incredible because you're 75% off. Um, there is this fold up staircase. I want to get that. <laughs> <laughs> we should. We should, yeah. Um, it's the fold flat ladder to get up into the loft. Normally it's $2,000. It's quite a quite an intricate piece. And uh, you can buy that for four ninety five. also 75% off. They've now made this little um, closet space, or I guess you could use it for a bathroom, uh, for interior walls. Kit, it's a kit, partition kit you can buy. Again, $4.95. Some great deals, and also the actual bunkies themselves are on sale. And also, if the first 10 people to order, so I don't know where they're at for the orders, but if you get in there right away, you also get a hoodie, and um, you get to join the master class and their private um, community. We also have a $250 discount code when you use our link down in the show notes below. Uh, one, one other note about it, this sale they're having right now is it is a pre-sale, so... If you order now, I mean, nobody's going to be building in, unless you're in a warm place. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> not up here. here. Nobody's going to be building in January or anything. So this is a, a pre-sale and you'll get your kit in the springtime when you're ready to build. Awesome. Like I said, I am not setting any completion dates for anything anymore, but Dan is hoping because we're going to get snow at some point here um, to have the ceiling done by this coming up weekend or the roof rather. And you already got the shingles, right? Oh, they're right here. And these are the same shingles that we have on our house down there. So it'll mat. So I didn't even notice this until just now, but Dan actually has this side already with the underlay on it. So he just has to finish up that other side. That's awesome, huh? That looks so great. I don't have a mic on, but I know this is not a finished project right now, but you could just click on our link, go onto the website and check out some of the colors and stuff people paint these they it's, look so they have cute. some really good pictures on there uh, now that show all, how people decorate these with the big decks and you can put a hot tub up there they're they're pretty cool they it's, are i i'm super happy with it um if it stays warm like this i'm really hoping we can get the deck in before it's really the ground is really frozen mm -hmm. but. that's awesome well it looks awesome hun. okay see you later all right back down to the house we go all right, friends, we are going to make our pasta noodles for our soup. So in our family, we always called these galushkas. I know that they're called other things for other um, people, but for us, they will always be galushkas and they are very, very simple. They are just eggs, flour, and salt, which is all pasta is. And into this soup, I did add um, a little bit of water, about that much of water and some uh, better than bouillon, around half a tablespoon or so. I did add a quart of water to this along with around half a tablespoon or so of better than bouillon, just because with all of those potatoes that I added, it was pretty thick and I need enough liquid to boil to be able to cook our noodles. I need a fork and I have added three eggs that I am just going to whisk up around a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to add a little bit of flour to this and start 
mixing our flour in. So we're looking to make a fairly goopy noodle with this. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so now we are going to take a little bit of our dough here, just about that much, and we're going to drop that right into our soup. And you can put as many of these in as you like. My children love galushkas so much and always say I don't put enough in. <laughs> so I have put in extra. Okay, now we're gonna add in our turkey. Look at that beautiful soup. So I'm just gonna let this cook for a couple more minutes just to make sure those galushkas cook all the way through. I give our soup stock a taste and see if we have to add anything. Nope, it is perfect. We don't need to add any salt or anything else to it. The flavor of galushkas reminds me so much of being a kid. I love them as much now as I did then. Ooh, that bowl is hot. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a chewy pasta noodle, which is essentially what it is. This is so good. Such a nourishing flavored soup. Really tasty. So that's breakfast done, lunch done. And then we just have to put together the pizzas for supper, which is very easy. We'll take our pizza dough out of the fridge and bring it up to room temperature for at least an hour. That part is really important. We'll roll it out, let it rise for a little bit, and then we are going to add our pizza toppings, just very basic mozzarella. We're gonna do ham and pineapple, I think I mentioned this earlier, uh, pepperoni, and then just some cheese pizzas. And we're just gonna use our homemade pizza sauce that we canned during the summer. All right, friends, I am going to do my very best to remember to take a little picture or a little video of the pizzas when we have them all put together and made so that I can show you what they look like when they are all finished. I, I will try my best. <laughs> it is pretty chaotic around here during dinner time, so I can't promise, but I will try. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.